Our next guest broke social barriers and made history becoming the first woman to officially run in the Boston Marathon. Please welcome Catherine Switzer to the program. Catherine, hey, thanks John. for joining us here at the Great table. To Good to see you. Hello, Hello, Felicia. Yes. And shakes yeah. all around. <laughs> so when you decided to run that marathon, women weren't actually allowed to run. So kind of take us back to that moment. Yeah. You know, first of all, there was nothing in the rule book about this. But I was training with the men's cross country team at Syracuse University. This is way before Title IX. Mm -hmm. And um, this is 67. I mean, Title IX was 72. Mm -hmm. And um, a, a volunteer coach was a marathon runner and he sort of felt sorry for me being so slow, and we began running together. And he had run the Mar Boston Marathon 15 times and regaled me with stories of it, and so I was inspired to run it, and I said, I'd like to run it one day. And he said, a woman can't possibly run a marathon. And I was really ignited and fired, and I said, hey, listen, come on, you know, I know I can do it. Like it, physically they didn't think that no. it could happen? Oh, you're too weak, you're too fragile, and your uh. uterus would fall out, you know, if you... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Which was the big one, right? Um, anyway, uh, so he challenged me, and he said, look, uh, you know, I'd be the first person to take you if you showed me in practice you could do the distance. So we trained hard, and one day we actually ran 31 miles, not 26.2. Wow. 31 miles. And he passed out at the end of the workout. <laughs> and he was so convinced now, like an evangelist, that women had superior endurance and stamina, which is true, yeah. okay, physiologically. And um, so he helped me sign up for the Boston Marathon, and there was nothing in the rule book about it being a men's only race. So you're literally. Nothing about gender on the entry. Yeah. You're literally running, and someone stopped you from running. Absolutely. Tell us what happened. What happened is, is that I'm in the race now, and um, we're laughing, and, and, and it is the first part of the race, and a mile and a half into the race, here I am. Um, an angry official jumped off the press truck. Oh, there my goodness. Attacked me uh. and screamed at me to get the hell out of his race and give me uh. those bib numbers. And my boyfriend. Uh, I was going to say, walked that in in yes. and, and sent him out of the race. And the little guy in the back, the older guy, 490, is my coach. And he's screaming, Leave her alone. She's okay. I've trained her. And this guy, the race director, was so angry. And he was trying to throw me out simply because I was a girl, but also because I was wearing a bib number. Oh my and gosh. that bib number is 261, as you can see. And I actually have a copy. I was just going to say, you got 261 there. It is. Yeah. there. Yeah. So yeah. we talk about pioneers in yeah. sports. We talk about pioneers in breaking gender roles and gender discrimination. But you were kind of an accidental pioneer in many ways. And then you embraced that role. Yes. What happened? Well, first of all, all of us have an opportunity to create to help a social injustice. We can, it, you know, we see it and most people walk away from it. You, you need to take responsibility and pick it up. And in my case, um, after he attacked me, I realized I had to finish this race because people wow. were always saying women were barging into places they weren't welcome and couldn't do it anyway. And um, obviously, and you know, it was, it was, I had a lot of pressure on me, mm -hmm. but I turned to my coach, I said, I'm gonna finish this race with my hands and my knees if I have to. Oh I was gosh. so determined. And how I did that at 20, you know, yes. it was amazing. That's the power of running. It gave me the sense of fearlessness and determination. Oh my gosh. Marathon's hard enough, you know? Yes. Yeah. But, I'd be um, lucky if I could run a tenth of what you've done. Yeah, let alone if it's a contact sport. <laughs> Jeez. Well, here's the point of the story. Is when I finished the race, you can't run 26 miles and stay mad. And when I finished mm. the race, I realized I wanted to, I needed to make change for women in wow. sports. Well, you're, uh, you still continue to do that. I know I there's a lot of people, I mean, the ladies have been killing it in sports lately, as I'm sure you know. And there's still people that think that women shouldn't be paid the same as men. What do you have to say to people like that? Well, first of all, you got to look at how far we've come. I mean, a tr guy tried to throw me out of the Boston Marathon. Yeah. Yeah. On 50 years ago and and now women in running have always had equal pay because we we pioneered that alongside of getting equality and so in soccer and other sports you know they're coming along unbelievably well they're doing great um, but we spectators also have to take a part in this mm -hmm. buy a ticket you know, that's going to be yeah. profound. You and the media have been great. I mean, the women's soccer has been terrific. So yeah. it's coming along. You know, they, that they, they deserve their equal pay, yes, right. but they, we, we still have a ways to go. Mm -hmm. So how many marathons have you run so far? I've run 42 marathons. Oh I'm wow. still running. But I think the one I'm most, and I'm I will continue, um, but the one I'm most proud of is um, the Boston 2017. It was the 50th anniversary, and I ran it again oh. and became the first woman to ever run a marathon 50 years after she first did and that's me in the middle Boston it was my my uh, probably the happiest day of my life and one reason I was thrilled about it was I met the wonderful folks from Humana 
because oh, they nice. they said we think you'd be a great ambassador for for active aging, showing people that you, it's never too late to continue to continue to stay healthy, but also to start being healthy. Mm -hmm. And it's really really true. This weekend is the of course big rock and roll Humana rock and roll um, uh, half marathon here in Chicago, and um, with 15,000 people are going to be out there, and many of them over 60, 70, and 80 years old. That's which is great. Really Do you is. ever plan to hang up those running shoes? No, actually, because the more you do, the more you can do. And we know now that uh, longevity, optimism, and, and what we say at Humana is um, uh, the whole person health is, is involves active aging and staying active as long as you possibly can. It's not just not being sick. Mm -hmm. It's also about the socialization, yeah. the emotional health. Yes. Too. Yes. Amen. Very, yes. very important. And as we age, we need that. We need that constant yeah. socialization. Yeah. Catherine, thank, thank you, you so much for so yeah. talking with us. Come yeah. see us again Super. anytime. Super. And if you want to grab your running shoes, you can join Catherine and the Humana Rock and Roll Chicago Half Marathon this Saturday and Sunday.